The lights are on at Delaware Stadium, a Sunday night CAA Big Ten showdown for our CAA Game of the Week. Number 18, Johns Hopkins, looking to rebound from a one-goal loss on Friday, traveling to Delaware, where the Blue Hens have their eyes on a top 20 victory. And with that, we welcome you. What's going on, everybody? Travis Eldridge and the Beast, Greg Gremlian with you. Thanks for closing your college lacrosse weekend with us here on LSN. It's Blue Jays versus Blue Hens in a battle of the Bluebirds. And, Greg, both these teams very, very similar in where they are in the national landscape and rankings. This should be a, a real treat here tonight. Yeah, two offenses that are really fun to watch. Very energetic sidelines. This is going to be a really good game for us to end the weekend on. So let's focus in on some players to watch. For Hopkins, it's hard to go anywhere else. Joey Epstein coming off a four-point performance against Navy on Friday. He's been the leader all season long. Yeah, Joey Epstein has been a, a fire plug ever since he got on campus at Hopkins. He's really flourishing under the offense with John Grant Jr. So it, we're going to be paying attention to him. He is going to be the linchpin to this offense tonight. On the other side, we focus in on a Canadian. The lefty, Mike Robinson, can score with some of the best in the country. 22 goals so far this year. You and I have done plenty of Delaware games, and Mike Robinson always comes up. He's all over the stat sheet. He gets it done in transition. He gets it done in settled 6v6. So I can't wait to see what he does tonight. And so the job for the goalies will be trying to slow down those potent offensive attacks. For the Hopkins uh, side of things, it's a veteran. The grad student out of Newton, Massachusetts, Josh Kirsten, once again getting the start. He's 4-4 four and four so far this year at 12.35 goals against average, a transfer from Ohio State. On the other side, Maybe a surprise to some. We have a new face in goal for the Delaware Blue Hens. It's Paul Reedy, the freshman out of North Carolina, making his fourth start of the season. His only full game of action, though, came last weekend against Marist. He's got a goals against average under 10. Matt Kilkiri was the guy last year. He was the starter. He's still here. He's still available. They've had an open competition throughout the beginning part of this season, and Coach Ben DeLuca opting to go with the freshman here tonight against Johns Hopkins. That says a lot. Coach DeLuca going with a freshman goaltender. And look, under uh, goals against under 10, the limelight, a primetime game. Let's do it, kid. Yeah, nothing like stepping into this atmosphere a terrific crowd on hand here at delaware stadium the lights are on only game here on a sunday night what a way to finish off our college lacrosse weekend which has included some terrific games we hope we get another good one here this evening as Kirsten goes to his crease at the face-off x we should see a number of different guys for both sides uh, one thing to keep an eye on matt naruski who had been injured uh, at last year in the offseason, had a surgery done. He will uh, take some face-offs we expect for Hopkins here tonight like he did on Friday, but it's Tyler Dunn at the X battling against Logan Premtage, and we're underway here at Delaware Stadium. It's going to be a real fun face-off matchup. You have two teams. Something rare in Division One lacrosse is to have a really experienced top-tier face-off coach, and both of these teams have it. So Delaware will settle in offensively for the first time today. Here's the starting midfielder, Nick Jessen, joined by Clay Miller and Cam Accioni in the midfield. J.P. Ward, Ty Kurtz, Mike Robinson starting at attack today. Here's Mark Bita. Feeds, shot just wide for Miller. Actually deflected off of J.P. Ward, but it goes out for a backup. Here is Ward, the sophomore. He's had a terrific start to this season so far. Already 15 goals on the year after he scored just two all of last season. Ward gets inside, bounce shot, tough angle, and Kirsten is out of the crease to collect. Great job by Hopkins collapsing on the slide there, making sure that if you're going to come into our crease, you're going to feel it. 
You mentioned Hopkins coming off the loss on Friday night against Navy. A disappointing loss against a rival in the mids. The mids going to Homewood and winning for the first time since 1969. Emo Man. Emotional well, victory for Navy on Friday night. Well, we all knew when Coach Ampolo got that job that it was just a matter of time, and they're going to start building it brick by brick. Here's Jacob Angelus, the midfielder, dodging against the short stick cider. Loose in front, and it's scooped up by the Canadian Reed Kurtz. Joe Spears had it, lost it, and now a ground ball for Hopkins as Jack Line comes back to collect. So he got a little excited there, going for a toe drag in the open field. Instead of just pulling that out. Now Hopkins gets another offensive possession. Jack Keough, Angeles, Garrett Degnan starting in the midfield. Connor D. Simone, Joey Epstein, Jonathan Peshko also rounding out the starting offense here for Hopkins. AC McDermott in there now, 33 in the black Hopkins tops. A lot of action in the crease. Hopkins has two guys in the crease. Here's Dagnan from the wing. Behind De Simone dodges a save. It's still loose in front and now scooped up by Spears. It's a good way to start this game for the young buck and goal. Getting a point blank shot, yeah. turning it away. A couple of those will build the confidence real quickly. Go behind to J.P. Ward. You remember Delaware last year, Charlie Kitchen, the grad student, really inhabiting that ex-attackman spot. At six foot five, he obviously brings something that Ward doesn't quite bring at 6'2", 185, but Ward has brought a lot to this attack unit, and he's slid in nicely to work with Kurtz and Robinson. Yeah, you gotta be real tall to make Ward not look as, like, that. <laughs> 6'2 is a lot of man. <laughs> that, that is for sure. It's Kyle Kavinsky's shot is stopped by Kurtz. Both defenses seem very comfortable right now. A lot of talk. The offense is getting a feel. I like Hopkins with the two man in the crease while going with a 1-4-1 one, one look. There was a lot of action inside the crease and they were stuck trying to push GLE, dodging from X. Want to see if that continues on this possession. First midfield line back in there. Delaware dropping into a zone here. All goes behind to Epstein, now Degnan. Epstein, near side, and he slides one in. No, he doesn't. It stayed out. I don't know how Man. that thing didn't cross the line. Was that, was that a side of the net, or did that somebody hit the pipe and shake it? We'll have to see if we can get another look at that. Looked as it though, was a great take. Yeah, he had, he had that near side crease open. The long run here for Miller. Vita, tough pass to handle there for Robinson. And the loose ball scooped up by Hopkins. Hopkins defense was watching film, man. They they are prepared. That dodge and then a little bump from the crease, it was wide, it was it was all over it. I mean they're they have the second slides prepared, they're talking really well. They had a chance there, an unsettled situation, but Epstein took his eyes off of it. Now the All-American candidate, Owen Grant, able to get it across to the offensive midfielder Nick Chesson. And Delaware gets another possession. Keep an eye on the ground ball battle here today. That's something that Peter Milliman and this Hopkins coaching staff has really been harping on in practice. Just those those hustle plays, the 50-50 balls, and he, he, he was telling us earlier this week, he just, 
when you, they look at film, they're not winning enough of those. There's one for Delaware. They strike first. Ty Kurtz, he doesn't need a lot of space. Blue Hens on the board. This is just great action. Forcing it inside, popping right off the hip, and he uses the slide man as a screen, shoots it right around his hip. Tell the goalie really couldn't tell where that was going until it was too late. That's some of that Canadian influence, native of Ontario, a terrific box player. The brother of Reed, who's on the defensive end. Ty Kurtz has been fantastic from the second he stepped on the field here at Delaware. A chance there for Premtage to win it cleanly. Ball's still loose here on the ground. And it's a loose ball push that'll give it to Delaware. <clears throat> you know, Travis, I mentioned earlier about having face-off coach. Trey Wilkes for Delaware is a phenomenal face-off coach. And they obviously saw in the film, Navy's had a lot of success this year raking and countering instead of going for the clamp. And they did well against Hopkins in the last game. And Logan Premtov has come out and used that second move, that rake move, two times in a row with success. Gets them this possession here. On the wing, spinning, keeping it out is Kirsten, and we got a crease violation. Strong take by Drew Linkaitis. Delaware slipped into that zone defense last time down here, and Hopkins seemed expected of it. They, they, they were pretty good at moving the ball, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Delaware slid for some reason, and that's where Epstein got that attack from GLE, uh, from X, pushing GLE for that goal. So I'm interested to see if they incorporate the zone more, if they stay with man-to-man. -man. That shot high from Keo. We saw Hopkins really dissect the Towson zone defense earlier this season here on LSN. That's when Joey Epstein went off for six goals in the first half. Yeah, if there's, I mean, John Grant Jr., this staff is incredible at Hopkins. John Grant Jr. has seen everything. These guys are going to be prepared for everything. There's Epstein saved by Reedy. I don't even know if he saw it, but he kept it out. I knew Reedy was going to be ready for this game when I saw that fresh sock tuck. <laughs> Those sweatpants are game ready. The little things. Attention to detail. <laughs> real recognizes real, man. So Delaware remains up 1-0 past the midway point of this opening quarter. Here on LSN, our CAA game of the week. Delaware and Hopkins. Travis Eldridge, Greg Gorenlian with you. As Mark Bita comes out of the box at first midfield on. Jessen, Miller, and Bita. Bita, the veteran out of New Jersey. Long range shot from Kurtz, who is not shy. Delaware loves setting the screen and then just fading so that the slide man goes away from the guy who's popping up for a shot. And almost everybody on Delaware has got range and they can hit that shot. Jessen goes back to collect after that pass, a little errant. Now Ward really pressured. Bowden Zulik is all over him. Good look though, backdoor cut and a score. There's the leading goal scorer for the Blue Hens, Mike Robinson with his first of the night. This is what makes the hen so dangerous, is you got a guy wheeling and dealing, and you all stare at the ball for one second. Back cut. You have to stay so disciplined with your eyes against Delaware, because it's so easy to just start staring at the ball. It looked like he was contained. It looked like everything was fine. And then that back cut to the goal. Great look from J.P. Ward, who picks up the assist. Dunn and Premtage at it again. Ball is loose, and here come the Blue Hens. Opportunity for Grant. Ground ball for Delaware, bounce shot wide. And the backup will stay with Ward. Bravo, 
Blue Hen's one of those teams with some of those Canadians in Kurtz and Robinson that when things get hectic around the crease, it's almost to their advantage. They are so good off the ground. You're absolutely right. Here's Kyle Kavinsky, part of that second midfield unit for Delaware. Took his eyes off of it. Round ball opportunity. It's won by Emma Jennings. Hopkins has had its chances. Couple of good looks. They just haven't found the back of the net yet. Not able to beat Paul Reedy, the freshman. Dagnan gets that left hand free, deflected in front. Loose ball, and there's a flag down. So we're going to get our first man up opportunity today, and it'll be a Hopkins chance. And offsides on Delaware. So Hopkins man up for the first time. Right around 37% on the year. Yeah, Delaware, I mean, they're last in the CAA this year so far in penalty minutes. That's not going to be a good recipe if that trend continues. Am Chivette. Number 17 in there, part of this man up unit. Epstein stepped down, deflected in front. The follow no good. Got his own rebound. Resets the shot clock to 60. Dagnan, Keo on the wing, Epstein. He is deadly from that far alley. Inside, another stop by Reedy. Reedy was ready for this game, man. He is, and he's not just flopping either. He's he's on top of the ball. He's watching where it goes, and he's reacting really, really well. That was point blank for Jonathan Peshko. From the wing, Dagnan. De Simone, opportunity. Epstein stepped down, deflected in front again. It's a really impressive kill. It's going to give the sideline a lot of juice. I mean, there are some penalty kills that it's just that a team doesn't get shots off. That one, they got good looks. Delaware just able to yeah. sniff them out. Quickly the other way. Delaware, you, you blink, they'll find a way to get one by you. Yeah. Now Hopkins has to have a good defensive stand here. Having that man up, getting stoned two or three times there, and then giving up a goal here would be a little bit of a backbreaker. Look out, Robinson. He doesn't miss many of those. He left him wide open on the slide. Ward tiptoes the crease. Zulik with a cost turnover. No, there comes the flag. Number 44 in black going to the box. So Delaware goes man up for the first time. They're even better on the man up so far this year, 46%. There was one point last year, this man up unit for Delaware, I think was up in the 50s. Yeah, I mean, you have a team that almost scores at will when it's even. It's not gonna be fair, you take a guy off the field. Tough angle shot sent wide. George Ward coming in to be part of this extra man unit for the Blue Hens. Kurtz on this near side, Bita at the top. Robinson on the far side wing. See, they have a man on either pipe. 
prepared to back it up if they have to, if they see the shot coming, but also able to sneak. So they get like a true one extra man above the cage here, instead of having just a true X guy behind the cage. And we are back to even strength here. A couple of shots on that man up, but nothing to show for it for Delaware. Bita beats his man, now picked up by the pole. Robinson across the top, Kurtz just wide. Four seconds. On ball, Hopkins has been great. Four seconds left here on the shot clock. Let's see if Ward sends one in front or if they just send this to the corner. And they're going to do the smart thing, send it to the corner. Shows how dangerous Delaware is when they're on offense. You make one mistake, right? We had the back cut earlier. And I mean, Hopkins has really played very well on ball and with that first and second slide. But if you, if you make a mistake, you, you slide when you don't need to, or you ball watch, they'll make you pay for it. Oh, intercepted. It was like a quarterback going up to steal it away. Here comes Delaware in transition. And you can hear it there on the sideline. Ben DeLuca calling for a timeout. Delaware will keep possession with that. 124 to go here in the first. We step aside. Blue Hens with their early lead over Hopkins. Well, there he is, the Delaware legend, the lacrosse legend. John Grant Jr., assistant coach for Johns Hopkins, their offensive coordinator, returning to his old stopping grounds here, Greg. And well, he did just about everything he could do in two years here at Delaware. It's got to be cool for him to have a chance to return to his his college stomping grounds. Yeah, I was drafted by the Rochester Rattlers in 06, and I actually got to play with both of those men right there, Pete Milliman and John Grant Jr. And it's been pretty much an honor to watch this guy go from an incredible, unbelievable superstar talent to then a veteran, a leader, and now watching him leading the next generation of offensive players at Hopkins He's just one of the best people in our sport. Yeah, and talking to Peter Milliman about hiring Junior, he said he was one of the first phone calls or texts he got when he was figuring out he was going to take the Hopkins job. As this one deflected in front, Lankinus shot stopped, but the second one, the rebound, cannot be. It's Clay Miller cleaning up the trash. It's 3-0 Delaware. Delaware attacking right after the whistle. Not wasting any time at all. Nice job by Lankaitis, too, not to go in the crease. Battle here again at the X. And this time, it's a violation on Delaware. It'll go the other way for Hopkins. Uh, look, was that Naruski? I am not sure. I missed the number. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell from the, from the view, but <clears throat> it'll be interesting to get him back in, coming back into the swing of things. I know they got him on a bit, a bit of a pitch count. Drewski was a great knee down face off guy. It'll be interesting to see how he's adapted with these new standing rules. Actually, Logan Callahan getting the face off there for Hopkins. As Epstein goes to work at X. Flag down. An extra possession here. 22 seconds left to go in the quarter for Hopkins. Delaware back in the zone. Good ball movement. Step down, shots deflected. That was a dangerous play by the defense of the goalie. It's touched up by Kevin Lynch. And now we'll get the penalty with four seconds to go in the first. Getting back to that discussion about John Junior, uh, John Gray Junior, and, and Pete Milliman, 
you know, when they when Pete Millen got this job and he started putting this staff together, everybody was whoa. I mean, also, you know, Jamison Kesterer is one is a phenomenal college coach. He was part of that Ohio State finals team, and everywhere he goes, the man is a very special coach as well. So this staff is is building something really really good here. Yeah, for sure. But it's Delaware that is building something good to start off this game here on Sunday night. A 3-0 start for the Blue Hens. Ty Kurtz and company with an early lead after one on LSN. What a start by that kid, Paul Reedy, the freshman out of North Carolina. Five saves in just his what we expect to be maybe his second full game playing he has been red hot to start has not given up a goal yet but Hopkins starts man up to start this second quarter as they carry the penalty over from the end of the first Travis Eldridge Greg Gurenlian back with you at LSN Epstein playing pitch and catch with Keo. on the wing it's Degnan Penalty release back to even strength. They had De Simone there on the doorstep. Instead, they couldn't complete the pass. That was really good coverage on the man down. We always talked about when I was playing about how the most dangerous time of a man down is when the penalty's released and you're transferring from zone into man to man. And there's a lot of times where something can get lost in the mix up there. Loose ball. Still loose as it squirts back toward the Delaware offensive end. Hopkins just flipping it forward and now tracked down by Blake Rogers. Good pressure in the ride there by the Blue Jays. Yeah, they ride fierce and they get extra possessions every single game. And that right there, those balls in the middle of the field is what Peter Millman was talking about earlier this week in terms of winning those ground ball battles because it creates extra possessions, extra opportunities. Sometimes you can scrap for a couple extra goals. Really can change things as the shot is wide for Degnan. Yeah, and possessions are going to mean a lot. But Delaware has, has done pretty well owning the face-off possession battle. Their goaltender is doing a phenomenal job. So if you're Hopkins, you can't allow extra transition or extra turnovers in the middle of the field. you got to get the possessions you can right now. Keo top of the box. Angelus. Two of them looking for a step down. Instead, it's Degnan wide. And this is where the zone defense in college across can be very effective. Now that there's a shot clock, you have to move the ball if you're off the, if you're the offense. Hopkins got caught up a little bit, just kind of banging the ball back and forth up top. That shot, he's just killing time now. That shot was saved by Reedy, so it resets the shot clock to 60. Shot clock was down around 10 for Hopkins, so they got more time now to work through this zone. Squeezing it inside there. Keo able to get out of trouble. Now Epstein, another stop. Resets the shot clock again. Hopkins keeps possession. Finally, Hopkins on the board here early in the second. It's Jonathan Peshko with his eighth of the year. So it can be done. <laughs> it can with volume. Get it past this man. It's a great move to the middle of the goal, giving yourself the best angle possible. Reedy takes up a lot of cage. You have to get in front of that net. A lot of times guys will fade away. But if Hopkins continues to bang the ball quickly and they continue to attack one man or another on that zone, it forces the zone to have to rotate. There's a face-off win, a shot bounced in there. I was Logan Callahan, the freshman, taking his second face off tonight. Oh, 
basketball deflected out over the far sideline, so it's Delaware possession. And we've got a timeout called here on the field. We'll keep it here. You got the feeling, Craig, on that last shot by Jonathan Peshko when he gave that fist bump after he scored. There was a little extra oomph of just frustration from what has been a difficult first half so far for the Hopkins offense. Yeah, and you I've been in games where you feel like your offense is doing the right things. The goaltender you're going against is just hot. And when you get the ball past them, there's almost this sense of relief on the side and like, okay, we can do it. Like, it, it, you know, and I think for Hopkins, they have enough confidence. They have enough vets. You got Epstein back there who can keep guys cool. And, and you go in there and you're talking to one of the greatest across players of all time, the drop into coordinator. There's no panic. You know, we know what we're doing. We've scouted this team. The goalie's doing a good job, but he can't, he can't hold us back forever. Let's just keep doing our offense. And, and if they're getting a couple, they've gotten two face-off wins in a row now. If they can even the possession battle there, then everything's going to be fine. There's a lot of game left. You see where Hopkins is in, in the national rankings coming into this weekend. Obviously, the loss against Navy will be factored into the decisions by media poll voters and coaches poll voters at some point this evening. But this would be a, a nice bounce back for Hopkins after a disappointing second half against Navy. They, it really felt like when you got the feel of that game that Hopkins probably wasn't in danger of losing until all of a sudden you blink. Navy gets hot there in the third and fourth quarters. And before you knew it, Hopkins was trailing and couldn't find a way to equalize it late. Yeah, you can't get complacent against the United States Navy. I mean, those those guys grind harder before breakfast than any, any other player they're going to go against. So, you know, I think they learned a lot from that. And, and here here's the, the, the true fact is they play in the Big Ten. And if you do well in Big Ten play, you're probably going to go to the tournament. Um, that's why you play in that conference. So this would be a, a great game for them to bounce back and then get some W's in the Big Ten. Yeah, especially after what we saw yesterday with Maryland just – manhandling Virginia at times. That, the Big Ten is, uh, is is for real. Yeah, Maryland is looks like a juggernaut. Here's Robinson from the wing, sends it behind to Ward. Yeah, that, it looked like going into that Terps-Cavs battle that those two were kind of above the rest. Maybe Maryland's just above everybody this year. Well, I mean, Maryland's also, last year they were a little wishy-washy face-off wise. But now Luke Weirman and, and Gavin Ty stepped up big time. Well, Robinson, I mean, he steps up when you when you need goals. That's that's what he does here for Delaware. Slides that one by Cursed for his second of the night. And this is what we said earlier, is, is a lot of these parts are interchangeable, Travis. I mean, these guys, it feels like everybody on this team could play any position on offense and be successful. Pick your poison. And when, when Mike Robinson gets that left hand free, it, 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 it just feels like he can score from almost anywhere on the field. There's Callahan again winning a faceoff. And now we get an offsides call. So Hopkins opportunity man up coming again. Face off battle is evened up. First midfield line on Keo, Angeles, and Degnan. Epstein, or excuse me, that's Angelus. Now Epstein. From the wing, step down shot, the bouncer goes. Dagnan with his first tonight. Now starting to feel their rhythm. 
Great dodge. Slide comes down adjacent, but there's no second man to get out there. That's just great recognition. You, hold, you heard Coach Kester on the mic on the sideline. After the last faceoff, make sure after you win the clamp, you get the ball out quickly instead of taking all those steps. You're, by rule, you're supposed to only take one step after you achieve a clamp, and it's never really enforced by collegiate referees, but maybe that's something they discuss before the game. Mike Robinson picks up the ground ball as Hopkins went early on that faceoff. But they turn it right over. Zulik scoops up the ground ball. If the move there at midfield. Here comes Brandon Schur. Another underrated thing about Mike Robinson, the attackman for Delaware, he's on the wings on faceoffs. How many attackmen in the country play faceoff wings? I'm gonna guess they're all named Mike Robinson <laughs> because I have, I've never, I mean, I haven't seen an attackman run the wing since high school. That's really impressive. That is how talented he is at the, the ground ball battle. That Ben DeLuca feels the need that he's a guy on the faceoff wings for Delaware. Kind of some, somewhat similar to what we saw Joel Tinney do as a, an offensive midfielder for Hopkins throughout his Blue Jays career. Joel Tinney is an extremely talented lacrosse player, man. He's he's always been a fun person to watch. Oh, and Grant came barreling in. Draws a whistle that'll keep this ball with Hopkins. Owen oh, Grant, 12 cause turnovers so far this year. Guy was up amongst the league leaders, or excuse me, the country leaders in cause turnovers last year. Diving in, did it slide in? The officials are discussing if he was in the crease or not. It's a goal! Joey Epstein! Yeah. Almost a mirror image of the earlier shot that he took that you and I both thought snuck in. I think he did a good job of getting rid of the ball before he lands in the crease here. Wow. There's one for the highlight reel. You know, uh, we had a lot of fun jokes to make about having the second crease in there, the goal mouth crease, when they put that in there. but. I think it's really trained players to do a good job of diving towards upfield away from the goalies. And I think it's made for a safer dive play. That was a great play by Tyler Dunn. Lost the clamp and then comes up with the cause turnover. Every college coach will tell you that's a faceoff win in their book. And, that, and that's exactly what players need to be better at is when you lose the clamp, not just pouting and running off the field, but you need to train for the afterthought of trying to battle for the ground ball. And now after trailing for this entire game so far, Hopkins a chance to pull even here around the midway point of the second quarter. B. Simone over on the wing. You can clearly hear the Delaware sidelines say that was a pass. I don't don't think the officials agree. Epstein tracks it down on the back up in the corner. Oh, what a takeaway. That was Kurtz. Loose ball, won by Epstein. Unsettled here for the Jays, but we have a flag down. Looked like a high hit near the sideline. On that loose ball, it looked like somebody got hit up high. And I think this is going to be a flag on Hopkins. That takeaway by Reed Kurtz was something special. Yeah, that was perfect placement. Yeah, helpless player. Ryan Evans going to the box. So man up for Delaware the in. other way.
Yeah, that's really dangerous. The Blue Hens man up. Second time today, not able to cash in the first time. And they do here. Ty Kurtz with his second. It doesn't take long, but the Blue Hens back up by two. If you're an offensive-minded player in high school and you're trying to figure out where to play in college, this might be a good spot where the, the light is always green in Delaware's offense. There's no get the ball around two or three times. Yeah, Ty Kurtz, who was the rookie of the year back in, in 2019 in the conference, Mike Robinson, the rookie of the year a year ago here in the CAA, the two of them have created a really dynamic attack unit as Premtage wins this faceoff. Couldn't get it out of his stick cleanly. Now finally does. And did we get another timeout? Yeah, and that's what Ben DeLuca was saying about Reedy coming into this game. He's tall, he's big, he's six foot four, 200 pounds, takes up a lot of the cage. And, you know, he's, he's, the defense is playing hard in front of him. As that one hit the post. And the backup goes to Hopkins. Rogers didn't have his stick when he went to back that up. Yeah, I've never seen that, but I was thinking, does that count if he doesn't have his stick? Yeah, so that's Delaware ball. That's a great call because, by the ref. Yeah, and you heard the Delaware sideline right on top of it. You can't play without a stick, and that includes trying to go back up a, a, an errant shot. Good for them getting that right. I don't think he realized until he went, went and picked up his stick. Yeah, at that point, you just leave it on the field and then you can run off to the sideline. Yeah. So another opportunity for Delaware. Linkitis beats his man, draws a flag. He had Robinson on that backside, passed a little too high. What a move. Robinson keeps it alive for Miller. Now J.P. Ward has his stick lifted, a save, but now we'll get the penalty. Can we get a replay of that goose? The kids at home, especially if you're a face-off academy kid, we always tell our guys to practice goosing the ball in any direction. We need a we need another shot at this because this was really nifty. It almost led to a goal too. Yeah, Mike Robinson, he does he did this last year right on an end line where he just pushed it back and he actually, I think, won it to himself. He is so crafty off the ground. We mentioned on the wings at face-offs. I mean, this, this guy does it all. Yeah, I mean, that, that was really cool to see. Here's Robinson trying to score, too. Already has two goals tonight. You almost don't have a choice but to push out against Delaware's man up because they all have range. But then when you push out, you're giving up that crease. So it's a lot of work. You got to cover a lot of ground. Robinson clangs the pipe. Rebound, Kurtz finishes. See, like right there, Kurtz hammering it from PLL two-point range right off the rebound. These guys are incredible. I mean, this looked like Ty Kurtz is playing wall ball off the pipe. He collects it in all in one motion, winds, fires, and scores. It's like a shooting gallery. And that's what I was saying is, is you think, okay, he's 12, 13 yards out. I'll just put my stick out at him. No, you have to get on their hands. But when you spread yourself that much, you're giving up the short goal, the short shot inside, so it's tough. There's Tom. a reason this team puts up so many points. Ty Kurtz with his third goal tonight. He's got a first half hat trick. Delaware wins another faceoff, and they're back to work offensively. I was talking with Ben DeLuca this week. He, he had this confidence about this team. Despite the loss at Michigan, that was kind of ugly a couple of weeks ago. They went and competed against Duke, but they, they lost down there in Durham. There's this confidence about him, even with some of those losses, that this team had something special, and I think you're seeing it here tonight. Yeah, when you're when you're a coach, people have to remember, you don't look at the game through the box score like a fan does. And you don't even look at it from a 
ugly or pretty looking play. You look at, you have the heartbeat of your team every day in practice. You know each of these men, you know, about as well as their families know them. You're with them every day. So that confidence doesn't come from, oh, we can fix some corrections on the field. It comes from knowing your guys. And he only recruits guys who are grinders. That's an offsides on Hopkins. It gives Delaware another chance, but Kirsten saw that one. Hunter Jaronski, the short stick D midi will go coast to coast. Jaronski, a guy who's starting to see some time here for Hopkins, the junior out of New Hope, Pennsylvania. I saw him play in high school for the Academy of the New Church. In high school, he took face-offs, he played defense with a long pull, and then would switch and grab a short stick and play attack. That is how versatile of a player he was in high school. Taronsky sounds like someone who should be playing linebacker with a neck collar somewhere. <laughs> that is true. Another save I mean, that here for Reedy. That is a strong name. Owen oh, Grant with the clear. Delaware back to work offensively. Now seven saves for Reedy. By the way, that matches a career high in saves for Reedy. He's done it here in the first half. Made seven saves against Michigan in 33 minutes a couple of weeks ago. Split time in cage in that game. Yeah, he's the real deal. That's for sure. And Kytus. Lips behind to Ward. Here in three minutes to go in the first half. A 6-3 Delaware lead. Ward feeds, couldn't catch it. Good Miller. And Hopkins back the other way. McManus in transition, shoots wide. That's a really good job by Hopkins on defense down there. Delaware is very good at drawing the slide and then stretching the slide, banging the ball to the other side of the field and dodging right away. And Hopkins recovered beautifully. Hopkins had gotten this thing back to one at four to three, but the Blue Hens then answered with back-to-back -back goals of their own. Good look inside, and the twister shot goes. Casey McDermott streaking down the middle has his third goal of the year. And this will this will annoy the Delaware coaching staff a little bit. You're playing a zone. This cannot happen. You cannot give up the middle of the field from X. Those those streaking attackmen that are cutting have to be accounted for, and it's got to be more than just stick your stick out. You got to be on them. Epstein picking up an assist to go along with his goal tonight. A couple of points for the standout from Bethesda, Maryland. Remtaj has gotten it going a little bit more here in this second, at the end of the second quarter. Giving Delaware some more possessions. Faceoffs now tilted eight to three in favor of Delaware. Now some of those we've seen Hopkins lose, but still get the possession, but still an edge for Delaware overall. This is Jason Kohler, part of that second midfield unit, along with Kavinsky for the Blue Hens. Kurtz streaking through. Had Kirsten out of the crease there for a second. Jessen, long range shot. That thing was from 14, 15 yards out, and Jessen's got his first tonight. This whole depth chart can bomb it. And they're not even hesitating. They're not even thinking about it. He got like a two yard step into that and he cranked it from the hip. A lot of these far out shots, a lot of them seem to be going low. Wonder if that's part of the scout on this. 
Ball is loose off that faceoff. And this time it goes to Hopkins as they were scrubbing for that ground ball. Remtaj is, I mean, I, I, I don't know if he's trying to draw the push, if it's an actual push or what, but he's going to need to keep on his feet. He's winning a lot of these clamps and, and directing the ball where he needs it. Got to get out of there on his, on his feet. So Hopkins can essentially hold for one here. They don't turn the shot clock off like you would see in college basketball because of what it could mean for different penalty situations. But the shot clock it has more time on it than the game clock here at the end of the first half. So Blue Jay is going to take some time off and see if they can get maybe one more good look at this. Yeah, it'll be interesting. They're not winning faceoffs, So I wonder if they're going to hold it so that they get it in the second half or if they're going to try to get the last shot. Hopkins takes a timeout here with just over 20 seconds to go in this first half. Uh, Greg, we've been talking about this Delaware offense, and tonight it's been led by Ty Kurtz, who can do a little bit of everything. The Canadian from Ontario with the hat trick so far tonight, and he's a guy who can stretch the field with some long range shots, and he also can score inside. He's put it all on display so far this evening, now up to 15 goals on the year. Yeah, and, and in the CAA where there's some really good defenses, it's crazy how talented this offense is, but he makes everything look so simple. Just the, the little flick of the wrist there off the hip, another sidearm shot. I think that one of the things that stands out what he's done on a bunch of these goals, check how he uses some of the screens of his defenders and able to not let the goalie get a good look at it. And that's kind of a, a little bit of that box influence coming to the field game. Yeah, absolutely. And also, it's interesting, you'll say, like, you got to change your release point when you're shooting overhand. He does an amazing job of disguising whether he's shooting it high or low when he's shooting it sidearm. It's not easy. And he does it with so much pace. And it's a very fluid motion. You're right, when you're doing that, Kyle Dixon, UVA grad, all-star, perennial all-star for the Bayhawks for years, used to do that all the time on his two-point shots. He'd walk right up to the defender and just shoot it right around his hip. And he was notorious for it. And, you know, I think this is a guy who has that kind of range that you could see playing in the PLL one day, shooting it from outside. Yeah, I think we may see him in the NLL, too. Absolutely. Ty Kurtz with three goals to lead the Blue Hens so far this evening. But Hopkins has it. 16 seconds to go in the half. Now Delaware comes to press out. Eight seconds left to go in the half. Epstein at X. Feeds out on the wing. Reedy keeps it out. Ball is loose, scooped up. There by Sider, and that is how the first half will end. Seems fitting that the first half ends with a save by the freshman, Paul Reedy. The North Carolina native stepping in and coming up big, and he's got his Blue Hens team up by three at the break. They got halftime here on LAC Sports Network. Star of the third quarter under the lights in the Battle of the Bluebirds. Blue Hens with a three-goal lead over the Blue Jays as we get ready to start this second half. And there is Matt Naruski. That's what we've been waiting for for Hopkins. We mentioned him coming back from off-season surgery. He has played very limited so far this year, made his debut on Friday night, taking five face-offs against Navy, went two of five. He is certainly on a pitch count for Hopkins, but maybe Coach Peter Milliman thinking, well, let's start the second half, see if we can steal a couple extra possessions after struggling at the X. Ruski wins it. It's good to see him back out there healthy. 
He's a great athlete. He's had a good good uh, career so far at Hopkins. He was a tremendous knee down faceoff guy. Glad yeah, he's back out there. The idea for Peter Milliman was to see to make sure you had him back for Big Ten play because they felt okay about their faceoff position throughout the non-conference with what they had. We've seen Tyler Dunn out there and. Uh, Logan Callahan as well taking face-offs, but they felt like in order to compete against some of the elite guys of the Big Ten, they'd like to have Naruski back, and that appears to be on track now as he's taking face-offs as that shot is wide from Peshko. Yeah, when you look at that Big Ten, I mean, it, it is filled with killers. So you have to, ha it's a total arms race in Big Ten when it comes to recruiting a face-off guy. So you have to have your stars out there when you can. Here's Angelus. Got his man hung up here at X, does Keo. And now they'll get it back out to Peshko. And Angelus down to 10 seconds of the shot clock. Good move, bounce shot wide. Did not hit the goalie or the net. I would be surprised they didn't put a little bit of time back on that shot clock. And they'll put one second on. The De Simone's just going to use this second to put it into the opposite corner. Oh, actually, he does the smart thing. He drops it. He didn't want to get the flag for uh, delay of game, so he just decided, I'm just going to drop it here. <laughs> Playing it safe. I mean, they had plenty of time to get back on defense and get their ride set up anyway. Yeah, Miller being pressured out. He's got a goal. Leading the way for Delaware in that first half, Ty Kurtz, three goals and an assist. Mike Robinson with a pair. Miller and Chesson in the midfield, each with one as well. Here's Bita taking his man to X. Beat into the middle, shot deflected on its way through from Robinson, and Kersey able to collect. You're just joining us. Delaware has led throughout. They jumped out to a 3-0 lead. Hopkins then scored three of the next four to cut it to within one. But then Delaware responding to take that three-goal advantage at the break. Zone defense from Delaware continues to be effective. Yeah, they've done a great job, and they've, they've slipped out of it to go man-to-man -man once in a while, just enough so that you can't just settle in and assume that they're going to do it. There's a shot and a score. Ryan Evans with his third goal of the year. The sophomore cuts it back to a two-goal game. That's a great way to get rid of that zone. Show your range. Ball from X straight up top to a step down shot. The goalie has to turn and face. Phenomenal placement. Shots off of assists. That's the key right here. You can't get much closer to the corner than that. As Naruski back out there for a face off for Hopkins. This time off the wing. It's scooped up by Joe Spears. Spears, one of four Delaware freshmen last year that played in all 13 games, and he continues to be a ground ball machine on the wings. LSM for the Blue Hens. Davinsky, second midfield on for Delaware. Ward has his step, Kersen read it the whole way. And Jaronski scoops up that loose ball. Now it's happened twice 
when Delaware has gotten on offense in this half, it's starting to look like once it gets settled down that Hopkins is dropping into his zone, but it's hard to tell because Delaware is going to the cage so early. That might be what they're going to do to try to push out and stop those long-range shooters. This is Jackson Raposo as it's stripped. Rebound just high for McDermott. Now we got a flag down. Hopkins going to go man up. It's a great trail check. He was hanging his stick as he was dodging. Then the body came. Oof. Actually, the titanium to the head came. And that is absolutely going to get a flag. It's Kevin Lynch who is going to get called for the penalty. Oh, man. Two minutes full time serve. This could be a big momentum chance for Hopkins. And it's a shame because it didn't look like he was going for the high hit. He was kind of stretching his arms out, and the trail check brought the Dodger down to his knees. And it was just a perfect timing situation. Glad he's okay. Real bad luck for Delaware. So a two minute man up opportunity for Hopkins. Nearly had one there. And it will be at a, a full two-minute extra man. Even if they score, the penalty will not be released. What a takeaway. That was Kevin McCormick. And he spins out of trouble as well. Uh, then they turn it over. So it kills off a little bit of time. Yeah, that was a great play. Just couldn't finish it upfield. Not just the takeaway, but the handles to get out of traffic. Still six on five for Hopkins. Can't you can hear the Hopkins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They want to move Man, the ball. They are. I mean, this is that's something in film that you're just gonna be like I can hear myself how come you guys can't just bang it on the field Epstein in front Peshko has it squirt sideways back out top step down deflected oh and Grant wore that one like a hockey defenseman oh what a move by McCormick Wow. What a phenomenal play on defense. This is a huge opportunity to kill this. What could have been a disaster. A little bit more time left on this man down situation for Delaware. We talked about the momentum chance for Hopkins. Delaware kills off this entire two minute penalty. Talk about a momentum the other way. And here we go, back to even strength. Wow. Completely unscathed from a two minute unreleasable penalty. Beta inverts his man. Defender falls down for a second. And Kytus now sends behind. It's win where Ward operates predominantly for Delaware. Spins inside, taken down in front of the crease, balls loose, and Kirsten comes to collect. That's the second time we've seen Ward try that inside roll around GLE, but Hopkins is collapsing down so well, it might be the better move to draw that and then bang it up field to get it to the backside where Delaware has been hot shooting. It's impressive what Delaware has been able to do with this zone so far. And the reason Hopkins is screaming past the ball is you have to make them shit. And you're going to want to, as a feeder, look around, look around for the one home run pass. That's not the way you beat a zone. You beat a zone by making these guys have to rotate. 
And you got to keep it hot. You got to pass the ball faster than they can rotate. Trying to step in there was McDermott. Evans. Down to under 30 seconds on the shot clock. Degnan dances. Evans doing, does a nice spin move. Lines fires wide. Delaware is pushing out just enough, getting on those gloves where they can't just feel like they're sitting back and waiting for Hopkins. They're making them make decisions. Epstein draws a flag as he went for another highlight reel dive. It was almost identical to the one we saw him do at the other end of the field. He's such an explosive athlete. Hmm. It's a one minute penalty. I don't know, man. Is that, what was it called? Glove to the helmet? Yeah, that was, I mean, the dive obviously must have been from the angle in which the official was, made it look worse than it was. Reed Kurtz draws the flag for an illegal body check is the call. That nearly got past De Simone. Good pressure here by Delaware. And down again for the third minute already of this quarter. Dagnan just wide. I'm really impressed with Delaware's man down tonight so far. I mean, they're just, they're all working like one wheel. When one man rotates, the second rotation's there, and they're just following each other. They're confident in where they're going. Peshko inside, and they finally cash in on a man-up opportunity. Cuts this Delaware lead to one. This is perfect. Soft spot in the zone. They weren't, they were just a step late. Didn't cradle it, just turn and shoot. Goal number two tonight for Jonathan Peshko. He's now got nine on the year. And they get Naruski on a hold. Not sure where the hold was on that, but Premtage has been so good. And it's tough now, because you're Hopkins. That's the third face-off guy you've used in this game. When you have another face-off guy who's starting, he is on the whistle. You're asking these guys to come in cold and try to catch up to the cadences of these officials. So it's a tall ask. To the Blue Hens, a chance to answer. Back-to-back -back goals from Hopkins to start the third quarter. Kurtz somehow still has that in his stick. Now it's loose. Big ground ball, Robinson! No way! The officials getting together. Robinson went behind the back, but I think we're gonna get a push first. Oh, that's too bad. Delaware keeps possession, Man. but Mike Robinson did one for the highlight reels. If I'm Mike Robinson, I find this highlight, I take off the sound, I throw some music on there. And don't tell anybody this didn't count. That was spectacular. That was everything Mike Robinson does in one play. Here he is from downtown. So good off the ground and, and such a skilled finisher. I mean, they don't make him like Mike Robinson. You know, before that, scrum and that goal I was gonna make the comment we've done Delaware games in the past and I remember last year whenever that offense would stop humming it would be because they stopped doing the ingredients of dodge bang 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 shot right and instead they would hold the ball a little too long try to dodge one or two guys and that's not what they're built for they're built for speed 
Josh Kerson makes another save. He's now up to 10 here on the evening. So he is settled in as Hopkins has a chance to tie this game on the possession. Angeles. Get passed back across to Degnan. Now they're moving it. Oh, they had Degnan there on the near side. Instead, it's a turnover. Here comes Spears in transition. Tell you what, Bowden Sulik has been all up in JP Ward's grill all night long. Yeah, he's impressive because he can match feet while he's throwing his checks. Sure, Rick Beardsley enjoys watching him play. Jessen had a step there in the sub sub game, but Hopkins able to get back defensively. Jessen, we've seen him score from here. Bounce shot eaten up by Kerson. There's another example. They were bombing the ball from deep in the first half and having success because those passes were coming from one side to the other and they were catching into the shot. Right there, dodging while the goalie's staring you down and then trying to shoot from outside. It's not gonna be a recipe to beat a solid goaltender. So as we near two minutes to go in this third quarter, Delaware has not scored in the quarter. Hopkins has scored twice, including in the man up. And the Blue Jays, once again, a chance to tie the game here. Evans has one here in the third. They leave him open. Evans has his shot stopped by Rady. It's almost like they dared him to shoot that. You're right. That's one of those, the, the Syracuse basketball team, the 2-3 zone, there are times they, they're guys that they just, they'll dare to shoot, and that was that one of those situations, but good pressure by Hopkins causes a turnover. Both of these teams ride so hard. Their attackmen don't give up. Here we go, minute to go in the quarter. One goal game on a Sunday night, Delaware Stadium. Here's Angeles from the wing. Keo. Angeles took his eye off of it for a second. Now Dagnan. Zone defense continues to be trouble. Keo just missed on that pass inside, and Grant scoops up the ground ball. And Owen oh, Grant's got some moves in the open field as well. And that's usually what you would see from a zone. You're baiting them to throw it inside so everyone can collapse. And that's what they didn't do on the last goal by Hopkins. 14 seconds to go in the quarter. It's Robinson. They took a chance on that skip pass, and Robinson pays it off, his third of the night. What a beautiful skip. This gives me a little bit of some Tommy Schreiber vibes. That sidearm all the way across. Bad approach, good roll. Mark Bita picking up the assist. That's his first point of the night. Comes with just seven seconds to go in the quarter. 
One more chance off the faceoff. They send it, and it's deflected. And so it'll be a two-goal Delaware lead as we enter the fourth. Some momentum for the Blue Hens. Hopkins had it early in the third. They pulled within one on this man-up goal by Peshko. But Robinson spinning and winning. Blue Hens up by two. 15 minutes left. 15 more minutes on the clock, and we've got a good one here at Delaware Stadium. Blue Hens up 8-6 to six as we start the fourth quarter on Lack Sports Network. It's once again Naruski there at the faceoff X for Hopkins, but it's the Blue Hens that win it with Logan Premtosh. Logan Premtosh has done a great job tonight. He's used multiple moves. He's mixed his exits up. And they score! Right off the bat, it's the short stick D mini, Jason Sider. Back to back Blue Hens goals. Logan Premtage has really made a difference in this game for the Blue Hens. This whole face off unit. Yes, take it all the way to the rack. They're not going to slide, make them pay. Delaware's got some mo going. Sider with his third goal of the year, the senior from Beth Page, New York, as they go back to Tyler Dunn at the X. He wins the faceoff for the Blue Jays. And Greg, you look at back at the end of that third quarter, how big was that goal by Mike Robinson? Beats the buzzer with about eight seconds to go in the quarter, and it just seemed like it took all the momentum back to the Blue Hens. Yeah, you saw the confidence from the Hopkins, and then at the end of that quarter, it had been almost a full quarter since Delaware scored, maybe more. They get that goal, they go back into the huddle, they go, let's go, boys. I mean, your leader is getting the job done for you. Keo bounce shot, hit the pipe. Grant with a great ground ball. Got to keep an eye on him in transition. He can go, but up by three. We'll do the smart thing, make sure that this offense gets a possession. Grant, the reigning CAA Defensive Player of the Year, also has four points so far this season. Robinson slipped, and now he's going to pay the price. March 20th, Mike Robinson made a mistake. Chance, Mark it down. Chance in transition for the Jays. It's deflected out. Yeah, they don't. He doesn't make many of them. That was Jake Lilly, the short stick D mitty. And even that one, I'm blaming on the groundskeeper. You know this turf; it gets slick when you, you start to get to the <laughs> evening hours. Great atmosphere right. here at Delaware Stadium under the lights on a Sunday night. Sign me up for more of these. Oh, yeah. Raposo sends it wide. On the win and wing, it's Dagnan. De Simone, he's been quiet tonight. Yeah, I'm impressed with how much this zone has kind of stifled. Like we had said, I mean, Hopkins really did a great job against Towson's zone. Another good ground ball by Grant. He can, goes in transition. Feed. And it didn't, J.P. Ward didn't quite catch that cleanly, and so he will settle things down. Yeah, you're, they're in an interesting spot here when you're Delaware. Three goals, that's a good, that's a good cushion, but it, you know, game's not over. You have a whole quarter to play. So you're going to err on the side of, let's pull it out once in a while to get some more clock, but you're still going to run your offense. You're still going to play lacrosse. 
Kohler sends it over to Jessen. Bounce shot, and Kirsten with an easy save. Now 12 stops for the grad student. And I don't think he's let up a single unassisted goal yet. Yeah, both goalies have been sharp. I think Kirsten, he's had to deal with all sorts of screens from his defenders as Delaware players have been shooting around guys. And we, we've mentioned Reedy all night. He's been terrific. His first double-digit save performance of his career. Yeah, it's been good lacrosse top to bottom, really. I mean, both of these teams have executed pretty well. I think if you're Hopkins, you're definitely a little frustrated with this zone situation. Another shot just worn by a defender. And then go to pick it up is Lynch. He's the one who ate that shot originally. And I think if you're like Hopkins is doing some of the right things, like right there, they push GLE. They force that second defender to come down. Then they have the step down, but they don't put the ball right on his ear. So he has to reach down to catch it. Now he can't spin it back up top real quick. So you get like kind of like a half shot that gets blocked. So they're just not executing as quickly and as perfect as they'd like, but the looks are there. Angelus. Pushed out, now he sends it behind. D. Simone, skip pass back out top, and there's a finish. Degnan from the wing has his second of the night. Hopkins gets one back. See, on one hand, you have that last play. Now you have this play. Quick from the wing, go to X. The zone has to completely turn around and slough down towards the goal line extended. The goalie has to turn around to face X. Great pass up top, right on his stick, step down shot. Honor D. Simone picking up an assist, his first point tonight. Naruski versus Premtaj on that faceoff. Hopkins wins the ground ball battle. Premtaj, the only time he's had trouble tonight is when he clamps and then he kicks his feet back and it slows down his exits. When he pops the ball out quick, it's been efficient for Delaware. Blue Jays a chance to pull back within one. They have not led tonight. They've been within one a couple of times. It was 4-3 back in the second quarter. They pulled it within one at 7-6 in the third quarter. But Delaware has had answers each time that the Jays have gotten close. The Simone. Epstein, Degnan on the wing. Bounce shot, that one saved by Reedy. Transition opportunity. And Sider does the smart thing, gets it to the offense. Ward. The Delaware team that, while there are a bunch of young guys that are sophomores, juniors, that play a lot of minutes, they're all guys, for the most part, that played a lot of minutes last year. There's a there's a real calm calmness to this team that was upset in the CAA semis by Hofstra last year, a team that a lot of people thought may do some damage in the NCAA tournament with all the talent they had and the promise they showed in the regular season a year ago. Yeah, and it's... To just kind of to your point here, they have a, 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 they've made some really good decisions down the stretch here. They don't push the ball. Not a lot of like forced errors or unforced errors. They, they make the right play. But McManus, long pull end to end, his second of the year, and he's got the Jays back within one. Set the alert and let's celebrate sticking bottom corners. 
Beautiful. Nobody picked up the senior from Maryland, and he made a pay. Just what they needed. Say, so here we go, 7.32 to go. Back to a one-goal game. Dunn back out at the X for the Jays, and he wins it. Dunn is so athletic and scrappy. Oh, what an effort play. Aiden Fritz went full Superman to come up with the strip. That was awesome. Full layout. He was fully horizontal. Axe swing check. Right near the sideline. That is a massive play. How about this intensity for a non-conference game? They can feel it here under the lights. Let's get pass across. Here's Mike Robinson. Little stutter step move. Pass a little off for Ward. Who has that deflected out of bounds. It'll give it to Hopkins. It should be mentioned that Delaware is looking to win against Hopkins for the first time ever. There's been 10 meetings since 1980. Hopkins is 10-0 against Delaware. Now, Hopkins has in their record book that there was a game in 1955 that Delaware won one to nothing. It may or may not have been a forfeit of some sort. But according to the Delaware record books, they have not beaten Hopkins. How incredibly honest of Johns Hopkins sports historians. And there it is, tied up. All square and nine apiece. Dagnan has a hat trick. And you gotta wonder, Travis, we were making that comment earlier when there was like 11 minutes left and they were up by three. And they were pulling it out a couple times. They weren't going right at the goal. They were taking their time, which seems like the smart, sensible thing, but maybe it's not really who they are. Maybe they should have let it fly a little bit more. So now the game's tied. Now they can be themselves again. So let's see if that changes. What a weekend for Garrett Dagnan. Now seven goals combined in the two games. He had four goals and an assist for five points against Navy on Friday night. Now three goals so far this evening. And he's got the game tied at nine. Another good one for Hopkins in this two-game weekend. Premtaj being hounded but he finds an outlet and Spears, opportunity and a cash-in goal for Robinson. Mr. Robinson has the answer, his fourth. Wow, Logan Premtaj playing possum. On the, getting a lot of pressure, turns around and cross field pass to create transition. What a heads up play by all three of the men involved in that. Yeah, it was Spears who picks up the assist. He was the guy that was open as the outlet and really sparked the transition. And Robinson's not gonna miss many opportunities like that. Once again, a, a battle coming in there is McCormick, the long pole. He's hounded on the sideline. Ball out of bounds and it's Hopkins ball. That was confusing. I thought McCormick had a wide open man on the defensive side of the ball, and instead he chose to go headlong into a double team. But that's once again another faceoff win in the in the stat sheet. But possession for Hopkins. Yeah, some of the faceoff edge is now 14 faceoffs won for Delaware to eight for Hopkins. It's probably a little bit more even than that when it comes down to possessions. Yeah. Epstein took his eyes off of it for a second, lucky to keep possession. And now a flag. Huh. Maybe he grazed the helmet or something. I didn't see it. it looked like it was all gloves and stick on that. So free possession for the Blue Jays as they will go man up. This one gets touched up. 
Degnan has to go back to collect. Still 15 seconds on this shot clock to try to get one. Angelus all the way around. Reedy with the save, but now we will get the penalty. This Delaware man down unit that has certainly been tested in this second half will be tested once again. Epstein puts it in. Man up opportunity for the Jays. One of four on the man up tonight. They got a man up goal in the third quarter. Epstein skip pass across. Step down. Shot and a score. It's Degnan again. His fourth. We're tied at 10. Straight across, skip pass, catch it. Got two good steps into that one, too. Got the feeling that whoever has the ball last might win this one. Back and forth we go here in the third quarter, or excuse me, the fourth quarter down the stretch. Epstein picks up the assist. That's his third of the night. A violation on Premtage and Hopkins. Gets the ball, but they're gonna make him bring it back here. No, they're not. They're gonna give it to Delaware. The ref point the, pointed the wrong way, I believe. That's why Prem Taj sprinted off the field because he thought Delaware had the ball. Robinson taking a quick shot there. Trying to put one in. Now they'll get the offense on. Nearing 3.30 to play. All tied at 10 at Delaware Stadium. Drew Linkaitis. Seen a bunch of time here down the stretch of the midfield. Ward. Kurtz. Now beat atop the box. He's got that short stick matchup. Robinson swims through the defense. Shot missed, deflected out in front. Still Delaware ball. Robinson! All sorts of flags down, but the goal will count his fifth. And the Blue Hens are back on top. Wow, they got Hopkins D on survival mode there for a couple of seconds. I hit in the crease. When in doubt, give it to the captain. Robinson is playing unbelievable tonight. And I say it like it's surprising because every time we do a Delaware game, we're talking about this guy. He does stuff every single game. It makes you more and more impressed. And now, of course, he'll go back on the faceoff wing. But no, they're actually going to give him a breather here. Oh, no, no, they'll switch sides. Never mind. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's here on the face-off wing. It's a, so that was a high hit. Yeah. This will be a man-up draw. So he's going to – Logan's going to put his shorty on the empty sideline. That way you're not getting covered by the LSM. Fred Tobbs is going to try to win this quickly and pull it straight back to his right shoulder. Narusi's going to try to tie that up. So man up face off for Delaware as the goal because it was a high hit does not wipe off the penalty. Big ground ball and guess who grabs it? Mr. Robinson. Great man ball. Great man ball there. Logan Premtage popped it out and then just tried to screen and box out. Naruski made them battle for it. That's what he brings to the table. He's blue collar as he gets out there. But they got it anyway. So this is a one minute extra man that'll take us to around two minutes to go in the game. A huge opportunity to get one more for Delaware to extend this lead to two. They have not trailed. Be 
Good defense there, but it's kept alive. George Ward goes back to collect. Beta skipped down to the doorstep. And it's George Ward with his first of the night. Great look down to the crease, caught Hop sleeping a little bit. I wonder if Hopkins was assuming they were just gonna sit on it. But that wing, he's out there real far. Great creep to the backside pipe by Ward. Now Hopkins has some serious work to do, starting at the faceoff stripe here. Another man up goal for Delaware. 2.07 to go. Naruski against Premtaj. Loose ball, picked up by Hopkins. Still time, but they will take a time out here. Talk this one over. They will let their offensive mastermind, John Grant Jr., draw something up here, trying to get them one back, and then have an opportunity, probably with around a minute to go, to win a faceoff and then have a chance to tie this game. But on the other end, Greg, I mean, we've been talking about him, especially all second half long. How good is Mike Robinson? I mean, he does everything. He never stops moving. He reminds me a little bit like a Steph Curry. He's never standing still on offense. He can dodge to get his shot. He can step down into a shot. He can catch it in the crease and turn and shoot. He can pick up ground balls on the wing. He can feed it all the way across the field. This guy's special. Five goals tonight for Mike Robinson. By the way, also has thir three ground balls because he's also a face-off wing. He's junior out of Peterborough, Ontario, has been putting on an absolute show. And especially these two goals down the stretch have been gigantic. You knew it, when Delaware has needed goals tonight, it's been Robinson who's come up with it. End of the third quarter, Hopkins pulls it back within one. Delaware without a goal for the entire quarter. It's Robinson who scores at the end of the frame. Then here down the stretch, when Hopkins pulls back even, who is it who scores in transition and, and puts Delaware back on front? Robinson, and, and that's been the story of the night. It's almost too poetic that the night John Grant Jr. comes back, it's a lefty Canadian from Peterborough who's lighting up the scoreboard. It's a little weird. Yeah, uh, yeah. no, yeah. you're right. I mean, it, that's a, it, it's a, just a, another Peterborough boy getting it done in a Blue Hens uniform. That's one of those, when you're John Grant Jr., you're not, you're not happy about it, but damn, you're a little proud. So Hopkins out of the timeout, minute 42 to go. Jack Keough will carry it behind and he'll invert the short stick. He's got De Simone open, and they tried to do the one more pass down on the doorstep, and Angelus has to retreat to grab it. Angelus, as it poked away, ground ball opportunity, and it's Grant, the All-American candidate that causes the turnover. That was an unbelievable play as he's recovering to get that ball on the ground. That's fantastic. And boy, is this conference gonna be fun this year. We, you see Delaware here tonight, Drexel, a, a team that uh, I had a chance to see a couple of, a week or so ago and played the, what an epic shootout against St. Joe's. Greg, you were, you were with me for that one. That was unbelievable. Yeah, man, that was fun. That was fun. This CA conference every year, you're just like, you don't know who's gonna, who's gonna show up. You know, I mean, Last year, we honestly thought Delaware was looking a bit like a juggernaut down the stretch. And then they get knocked off in the semis. So anything can happen in this conference. That's why it's so fun.
Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen Towson a couple of times this year. Uh, Tigers have a win over Loyola that continues to look better and better. UMass has competed against uh, the likes of Yale and Army well. So, I mean, this is going to be a, a loaded conference once again and going to be a lot of fun all season long. But for now, Delaware trying to preserve what would be their, what they would consider their first ever win over Johns Hopkins. Robinson picks up the ground ball. Now it's just time to play keep away. Whoa, Whoa. yard Can't sale. Hopkins has a chance. Under a minute to go. Jaronski, Epstein. Under 30, another takeaway for Delaware. J.P. Ward will run it to the corner. Flag is down. Timeout, Blue Heads. They are 13 seconds away from what would be their biggest win of the year. We will step aside. We'll have those final 13 seconds. Two goal lead for the Blue Hens when we come back on LSN. Well, the Delaware bench can feel it. Trying to beat Hopkins for the first time since the first meeting, according to their record books, back in 1980. Ten meetings since 1980. Every single one of them won by Hopkins. Until it appears tonight. Seven seconds left. Bita will continue to run this one out. And he's sprinting to a victory. Blue Hens knock off Hopkins. And they get their biggest non-conference win of the year. 12 to 10, your final. That's a big time win, Greg. Delaware can ball. Direct quote from Dan Citrone. I mean, these guys, they have, they are a complete team. High energy offense, incredible talent. And now it seems they have a young stud goaltender. Great job from top to bottom by this squad tonight. Paul Reedy goes wire to wire for just the second time in his college career. The freshman playing 60 minutes, 12 saves, gives up the 10 goals, but comes up with a gigantic win here early in his college career. And you know, we, I was talking to Ben DeLuca this week, and you, you could feel this confidence about this team. We were talking about it, and man, when Mike Robinson plays the way he did tonight, and this offense is clicking, they can compete with just about anybody in the country. This is why you go out and you find yourself a coach DeLuca. We knew that the second this hiring happened a few years ago, that this program was on the up. And it's not gonna stop here, man. This is a, an incredible staff, and this program is primed to make some serious noise. Certainly one of the biggest non-conference wins of Ben DeLuca's Delaware coaching career. Now in his fifth season, gets this Blue Hens team to six and two. They will finish up non-conference play at Villanova next week before they get into CAA play. But that will do it for us here from Delaware Stadium. Once again, your final score, Blue Hens 12, Blue Jays 10. What a finish and what a terrific game here on a Sunday night. Great way to close your college lacrosse weekend. But for now, we say so long for Greg Karenlian and our entire crew, Travis Eldridge saying so long from Delaware. We'll see you in a couple weeks.